let's uh, take a step back and ask the question what's this linearity that appears in the name linear algebra before we can answer that in a sensible fashion we have to take one more step back and talk about variables expressions and equations functions let me ask you this what's a variable in the context of algebra a placeholder for a value good good answers it's like a container for an unknown value what's an expression in in the context of linear algebra a combination of mathematical entities but since we call mathematical entities variables as placeholders yeah combination of variables but combining using what mathematical operations so that's what it is so if i take a variable x x squared is an expression x itself is an expression or a function like sine of x even though we haven't defined what a function is that would be an expression x squared e to the power x ln of x a quadratic a x squared plus bx plus c all those things are expressions and if you want to think of more complicated variables like a vector okay a couple of words about my notation when i use uh, normal letters in italics those stand for scalar values like values real numbers when i use bold letters the same symbol x stands for a vector a capital bold symbol stands for a matrix so a matrix times a vector also is an expression here we are thinking of the the vector x as a, as a variable it's a container for a mathematical entity which is not a simple number but is something more complicated so is a a contains a, a matrix inside so when you assign a name to an expression you when you call it by something then that is what we mean by a function but with one extra condition so let's not worry about the condition yet but let's think about the assignment first if i say f stands for some expression ax where a is just a number like let's say 5x x is a variable then that is a function in x so that's what a function is so ln of x or e to the power x all those things are functions with one proviso that it should be single value so if i say f of x is uh, the absolute value of square root of uh, x so let me not call it square root of x but let me call it x to the power half okay is that a function by our definition is this an expression the absolute value of uh, x to the power half is an expression because it's got x in it and it's some mathematical operation that you're doing on it specified by that the symbols there so it is an expression if i call it by a name f is it a function by which what i mean is is it single valued if it is single valued and if it is an expression then it's a function okay now if i say f of x is equal to x to the power half without the absolute value do you think this is a function it's no but why not what's wrong with this not single value obviously so that's all i wanted to kind of drive home now we will use the notation r to stand for the set of all possible real numbers r for real i just got this funny double two-faced uh, uh, notation if i define a function i might say that it's a function that takes a value in r and maps it to another value in r so f r to r similar to a computer language assignment in which in python or something when you say x is equal to 5 you have a memory location with a label x somewhere and you're putting in the value 5 in that container in that memory location and if you take an expression and call it by a name again it's an assignment kind of operation i'm not saying anything about the truthfulness or the veracity of uh, that statement i'm just using the name f to stand for an expression equation is a is a different kind of beast when i say an expression is equal to another expression or a constant then what i'm saying as an equation is something more i'm saying that that is a statement of truth okay, i'm requiring that to be true so for instance if i say ax square plus bx plus c equal to zero by the way that is our preferred uh, form of an equation we'll have expression on the left hand side and uh, constant on the right hand side that's the way we like to write uh, equations so here what i mean by this is i'm stating that this is true and i'm looking for for instance the values of x that satisfy this statement of truth similarly if i say something like minus mx plus y equal to c which is the same as y is equal to mx plus c i'm looking for all the y's and all the x's that satisfy this condition okay that is an equation i'm not taking this container here i'm putting in a value c in it five or whatever number so that's not what's happening i'm requiring that statement to be true or looking for the values that will make the statement true but that will be the solution of uh, that equation by the way the solution of this equation will be a line every point in that line will have x and y values that satisfy this equation so equal sign can mean two different things in uh, one context it might be like an assignment as you see it in uh, programming languages but in another context it could be an equation the equality is actually a statement of truth with that 
we can go one step further and look at a function as though it's a transformation a function a simple function y equal to fx so it's a function that takes a value x from the set of real numbers and transforms it into another value in uh, real numbers which is y so you can actually think of this as as a black box an entity that takes a value and transforms it into y and gives it back to you input here output there a real number gets mapped to another real number so that's the way to look at it so it's a transformation it's a mapping it's a function in our context in linear algebra for us all these things are basically the same they are all synonym but for a mathematical course if this were a, a graduate level course in now linear algebra then that professor might want to make distinctions between these things so let me give you some examples of of uh, transformations y equal to this that's a transformation that's a line the second one is a quadratic the third one is some other shape lawn sign is a is a waveform so those are all good examples then i have some counter examples again i mean x to the power half rather than square root of x because i was told yesterday that square root of x implies that is a positive square root of x so x to the power half doesn't have that implication so these are not functions because they're not single valued the first two are obvious the third one y is equal to time actually it's a function in uh, in excel if you want to know the time this is the function that you use but i'm saying that it's not a function for us in a linear algebra what's wrong with that why is this not a function it's got two problems one problem is of course that it's multi-valued depending on the time it is now i get i get different values so that is obviously a problem this another problem there it doesn't take any input it doesn't you don't know what it is mapping so question do these two equations represent functions the first one is y is equal to x to the power minus half now is that a function does it represent a function it's not a function as it is written but does it represent does it come from a function y is equal to x to the power minus half why is this not a function it's the same objection as uh, what we had earlier x to the power half and x to the power minus half reciprocal of the other one so it's not single valued one is not single valued so is the the other also is not single valued look at the second one there x to the power minus one third is that a function it's again an exponent that happens to a function which is kind of interesting odd roots are functions but even roots are not functions. now with all that let's move on to linearity we already learned expressions functions and equations these things each one of those objects can be linear or non-linear expressions are just combinations of variables functions are named expressions equations are expression equal to constant so if the expression is a uh, linear then the function cor corresponding function which stands for its name is linear and the equation of which this expression is a part also is linear so there are two conditions to be satisfied i haven't specified them but i will very soon so if the expression is linear by these two conditions that i will specify then the function function in which it is the, the right hand side that is linear and the equation in which it is the left hand side that also is linear all right now let's define these two conditions the condition number one is called homogeneity that means if you scale the input variable by some number the output also should scale by the same number so if that happens in an expression then that expression is a linear if you call it by a function name f then that function also is linear so if i have f of x equal to some number 5x i want to see if it satisfies the first condition of homogeneity what i will have to do is to scale s by some number let's try scaling it by a, a number two so i will say f of uh, 2x what is that that's going to be equal to 5 times 2x that is just 2 times 5x which of course is a 2 times f of x so f of some scalar times x is the same as s f of x that implies it is a homogeneous h satisfied if you take some other example where it is not satisfied x square we know that is not linear because it's quadratic already but let's see what happens if you take f of a 2x that is a 2x square 4x square 4 times f of x not 2 times f of x so h not satisfied now this has an implication i can scale by any number in particular i could take 0 so i could take f of uh, 0 times x which is just 0 and this has to be equal to 0 times f of x which is 0 so f of 0 has to be 0 for it to satisfy the first condition of uh, linearity so one easy way to test put 0 for x if you don't get 0 then right away it is not linear but if, it, if you do get 0 it doesn't mean that it's linear you have to do further test but if you don't you know right away that it's not for instance if you had the equation y is equal to mx plus c which i'm going to call that a function f of x equal to that is as linear f of zero is uh, m times zero which is zero plus c 
this is linear only if c is zero which is surprising you know that it's a line but it's not a linear expression in one variable let's move on to the second additivity condition if you have two inputs take the sum of the inputs and take the function of that that has to decompose to the sum of the functions so f of x plus x prime is equal to f of x plus f of x prime for these two values in uh, the set of real numbers okay so that's the additivity condition so let's check if uh, f of x equal to 5x is this uh, linear by the second condition or does it satisfy the second condition of linearity let's take f of 1 plus 2 that is going to be equal to 5 times 1 plus 2 which is going to be equal to 5 times 1 plus 5 times 2 which is f of 1 plus f of 2 maybe it's easier to show with symbols rather than numbers let me do this once more using f of x plus x prime is going to be equal to 5 times x plus x prime which is 5x plus 5 x prime which is equal to f of x f of x prime so additivity condition satisfied let's look at uh, the test that you can apply to see if something is linear as we just did so test you scale the input by a factor and the output should scale by the same factor sum the inputs if you have two inputs uh, take the sum of it and take the output for the sum should be equal to the sum of the individual outputs so the implications are interesting zero should always transform to zero i'm talking about real numbers here but even when you move on to complex objects like vectors a zero vector should transform to a zero vector that is important another thing is a negative input should change the negative uh, output so if you take f of x and take f of uh, minus x that should be minus fx because you're just multiplying by minus one so that's again easy to test the scaling of the input some of the inputs those things are basically conditions that those are the things that you can do also so this is the order in which you might want to apply the test the first thing is very easy put zero and see if you get zero if you don't get zero you can stop right there if you do get zero it doesn't mean that you you should be happy you might get hit by one of the other conditions let me show you an example of where the first consequence or implication is satisfied zero transform to zero but it's still not linear okay i have a vector three and four so a vector going this way this is my vector okay so vector always our vectors always start from the origin and go to some point in the co the coordinate space this point is actually three four so this vector is actually three four what's the length of this vector so the length is uh, five you know that from uh, the old right angle triangle so let me call this guy x vector x and this length i'm going to use this notation which is called the norm or the size of the vector that is five now suppose i make the vector zero or multiply the vector by zero or take the zero vector another vector which is a zero vector here 0 0 its length is going to be 0 so this is uh, my x prime this is my so it looks like the first first uh, implication is satisfied but is it linear though this is function which is a function from a vector to a real number which is a norm okay is this function linear do you think it is linear it's not linear because if you take the negative of it which will be multiply the vector by minus one so you will get minus three minus four here the length of this guy x double prime let's say is still five it's not minus five it is still five so you flip the vector it doesn't change sign so this function f of x vector is equal to the norm of the vector this is not linear okay even though it might look like it is it scales properly it doesn't scale when you take the negative of it so you might get hit by things that you may not see immediately it just means that if you flip the sign of the input the output also should flip the sign first one is that linear actually we answered that already it is not linear unless c is equal to zero for any constant other than zero this is not linear the a line a line is not linear which is a weird thing to say unless the constant is zero unless it goes through the origin going through the origin is important things have to go through the origin for to be linear the second one is the is a norm of a vector that we just did that is not linear because if you take the negative of the vector the norm is always positive fx equal to 5 is that linear not linear because it's basically the same as mx plus c with c equal to 5 and m equal to 0 so it's not linear fx equal to a quadratic obviously not linear because it's quadratic fx equal to 0 is that linear how do you know whether it's linear or not we just have to go through the steps here i just have to apply the two conditions x equal to 0 so f of 0 is a uh, 0 that is good f of uh, if i take f of uh, 
x plus x prime which is the additivity condition so this is going to give me zero because whatever is inside i'm going to get zero i know that and this is also equal to f of x plus f of x prime because this is zero and this also is zero so this is satisfied this is satisfied this is fine this is fine everything is fine so this is actually linear x plus 3 is a uh, not linear because it's uh, mx plus c with c equal to 3 m equal to 1 the last one fx equal to x plus 3x is a linear yeah because it is just 4x so what's wrong with the